when your youth is gone, please let me, this cannot be overemphasized, but a lot of you do not know. When your youth is gone, your use is gone. You better listen. You better listen. Methuselah was 900 and what? Seven, 970 years old or so. Methuselah. There was no one act of goodness or greatness recorded around him except that he grew so he was the oldest man on earth with no record of feat or exploit. Enoch on the other side, walk with God. He was the first man not to taste death at the time that God had proclaimed death. Brief assistance. Look at this. Numbers chapter number 8. Numbers chapter number 8. Verses 23 to 26. And please listen to me very carefully. I can tell you and I've preached this in many churches over the years. A pastor called me to a youth program one day. And I said, please pastor, can I address the youth? If you like pastor, you can go and sit down in your office. Because I'm not sure God can still redeem you. <laughs> it looks harsh. Till today, the pastor is still at the level that I left. As a matter of fact, things have turned more downwards. And I said, let me talk to the youth. And some of the youth, I said, let me talk to that time. Some of them gave their life to Jesus. And some of them, we went to a program in the recent time, about uh, around this time last year, I went for a wedding. One of the young girls there that was around 11 that gave his life to Jesus, so many things have happened in her life. She was one of the dancers in the wedding. If you see the way, it was a church wedding. If you see the way she was, she was twerking. I had to leave the wedding, mid wedding, so that evil spirit will not get the best of me. Because this girl, as a matter of fact, she couldn't even greet me anymore. She has become big. She has grown ass, big ass. She has grown big boobs. And the ways, even the clothes she was wearing, and the way she was rolling her body and rolling her body, just because somebody, the person who was even doing wedding is the second marriage. At around age 27 is the second marriage. I didn't even know I got myself there because I don't attend second marriage. I attend one. <laughs> After that one, people have not even gotten people to attend one wedding. You, you, you will now do two. For what? What did you, how many years do you have? When it's not that the first one died, he didn't die. And I was talking to myself, and this is a very innocent girl that time that received Jesus as a Lord and as a What went wrong? That time, God could have taken a hold. Now he didn't know. Then, going forward now, how does her life go? Because with the choices he has made right now, with the decisions he has made that right, and choices and decisions are based on information and ideologies. Information is the basis of ideology. There is nobody who holds on to any ideology that has not, first of all, acquired certain pieces of information. And based on ideologies, you make decisions and choices. And you make your decisions. But eventually, your decisions make you. Your decisions become your destiny. That's why I'm emphasizing this one that I'm emphasizing. In case one or two people, three or four people, five or people, five, six people can be taught. This was taught to me when I was younger. And I made very great, very many great decisions and choices. That's why you still find me here. I have friends that don't have anything to do with this animal. Say, David, you know, I'm building one house. I'm, I'm thinking, that house, you're going to take it to heaven. That house, one day is going to become souls that are saved, healed and delivered. No. Look at what, and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, please, note this, saying, this is it that belongs unto the Lephite. From 20 and 5 years old and upward, they shall go in, in to wait upon the service of the tabernacle of the congregation. Go on. 
And from the age of 50 years, they shall cease waiting upon the service thereof and shall serve no more. Go on. But shall minister with their brethren in the tabernacle of the congregation to keep the charge and shall do no service. So does thou say, so does thou do unto the Levite touching their charge. Is God encouraging disparity? You know, some of you say, I don't care. You know, some people say, I don't care what age you are. God's coming for you tonight. Oh, I don't care. I don't, your God doesn't look at your age. And, and by the time the keyboard man is hyping everything, you would think it's true. <laughs> Until the following day, you go and apply for a job. And they will tell you, how old are you? They say, I'm 51. They say, oh, sorry. We want 35 downwards in this job. He said, no, my God is not like that. <laughs> Even God is laughing. <laughs> Even God is laughing. He said, free me from it. Wait, young man, do this for me. Take this young lady. Tell me what you gain from the... Hello, look at me. Look at me. You write to me what you gain from this service. From this point that I'm making this whatever, you write to me tonight. Hello, I've not finished talking. Did you hear what I said? What did I say you should do? Yes, of this message. Yes, I want to know. Let me take her home to take her bag. When you take your jolly jolly, take her to the train station. Our, stay, our, our, our train is 8.50, please. Thank you. Are you listening to me? I want you to listen to me very carefully. I want you to listen to me very carefully. Even God himself places, listen. I, I, you know when I say listen, listen, like this, I feel like using knife to cut my, my intestine so that you can see, you see, I'm trying to open this place. Because, you know, I don't know what is wrong with me. I want to cut my intestine so that you can see what is there. I hope somebody can just understand. Your attitude will change when you understand. Even God, the God of all mercies, Rene Dwey, places a cap on when somebody will be useful in the tabernacle. Inside me, all the skills, the defense mechanism, the styles. You know, in playing football, you need speed, you need strength, you need skills. As a matter of fact, you need strength first. You need skills. And then you need speed. Because if you have speed, you don't have strength. You don't have skill. You are in an entity. They just, be, they just kill you. Where are you running run into? You need strength. There comes a time. You have, you have built a lot of skills and speed. They are, in, they are inside your brain. But there is no strength to exhibit it. That's why the whole Euro 2024, Ronaldo did not score one goal. Hey, the almighty Ronaldo. And don't, please go and get me rank. Until recent time. Ronaldo is my, I'm his number one fan. Anytime they are doing uh, debate about Ronaldo and Lionel Messi, I say Lionel Messi is just overhyped. Ronaldo, but the record of Lionel Messi is just, uh, sorry, it's too much. World Cup, this time, that That is left leg. Even Messi himself in the United States of America, how many noise are you hearing now? How much of noise are you hearing? Is this guy, this Brazilian guy that looks like me, is, is the one? What's the name of uh, Rodrigo? What's the name of this guy that everybody is. Uh, what's the name? Finicius Jr. Finicius. Or Finic. What's the name? Why are you laughing? Finis, that guy. It's a problem to anywhere. Including in Bakwe. Only in Bakwe took France to the final and almost won it for them. Scored three. Lionel Messi and all the rest, they, they shared the rest <laughs> for Argentina with all the my practices to win. They wanted them to win. FIFA wanted them to win. Psh. To me, in Bakwe won the World Cup. Scored. The whole of Argentina has caught three. That guy, speed, strength. Wow. And who was his mentor? Ronaldo. I don't know whether Ronaldo scored during World Cup. I, uh, it's my desire. 
My desire, my desire, my desire is to see Ronaldo to be scoring. But he, even inside his, his, his heart, he is caught. <laughs> but the legs cannot really carry the goal. He, he, he has caught inside his mind. <laughs> But the, but the legs, but the legs. Before Ronaldo around the goal area, you're done. He's scoring with head, he's scoring with uh, bicycle kick, he's scoring with, with soda, with that, that is not, he, 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 all, the, all this is leg over. When last did you see him do leg over? Except he stand in one place, he do like this, do like this. <laughs> then he pass it to, some, pass it to somebody else. He, he was in front of the goal. He just passed it to somebody and said, what an act of philanthropy. He may not score it. <laughs> Sorry. I love him more than you. He may not score it, so he gave it to somebody and I said, oh, he's our hero. He said, well, <laughs> that's what the Bible said. That, that, there's a time at age 50, somebody will have to be passing the ball to <laughs> want to score them. Say so that is a time and season for everything in this life. He now told them, in case a 50-year-old still wants to serve in the temple, you have to be an associate. You didn't read. Hello? They say, this is our main photographer, this is associate photographer. <laughs> you have to be an assistant. Are you listening to what I'm saying? And the problem is that on daily basis, this, our age evaporates. I was talking to Kufri as we were talking. I said, all the golden that you see, all the recce, all the senam, these were just 17 year old when I met them. 17, 18. This one that you see with big beards now. Some of them two children. Mama something. They were little children. I said it was an accurate task for me to pastor them that time because everybody was laughing at me. One pastor said, what are you even looking for that you are staying inside GMIT, staying inside GMIT? He said, if it is that you are thinking that these people will become church members one day, he said they will never be. And he was one of the most precious servants of God to me. I said, why is he talking like this? Me, myself, and I look at them, I, I see their legs. It's now, when I was talking about all of your legs that time, you didn't know. It's now when you look back and you see the legs. You yourself. <laughs> Because in your heart, you are big people that time, isn't it? God, you are a big man. With the way you are even walking, you, 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 the, the walking style shows you that you are a big, how we can be bigger than God? With your ass style like this, on your hand. Yeah. And it's in the middle. You didn't do it throughout the whole, <laughs> it's in the middle here. Yeah. And you with red, whatever. And so now we wear something that will be tight so that the whole lap will be out and will be balling around. I can't forget. I can't forget. But now, they are 27, 28. Two, sort of 30. That time you used to look at 30 year old as old people, isn't it? When you accomplish a particular age, it now looks small to you. Whereas you are old, but you don't know. It to you looks small. It looks small to you. Are you listening to me and say, oh, I'm just 30 years old. You know, I know what I'm planning for. Let me tell you, your life is actually divided to three. The first 20, the second 20, the third 20. I'm telling you. What is the retirement age? What are they telling you when you have retired? They say, go and die. <laughs> the first 20 is when you are young. The second 20 is when you are old. <laughs> You are old. I was so to Joel yesterday, one of Sinab's closest friends. It was my wife that was so me. She's on, she's on Instagram. Her breast out, even though there is nothing. As she's not doing like this around the street, I said, look at the girl we were asking her to follow Christ. She was following a boyfriend that time. The person about a boyfriend was more important to her because a boyfriend broke away from her. You remember? I remember all this thing. Because even the boyfriend is my son from Kazuba. 
You know the, that the dad used to attend your church that came to JMIT here, one boy like you, was the boyfriend. You will, you will know the gist now. Now, since now I say, I now told you what. I said, look at 28 years old. No husband. He's not, I said, he's not fronting herself. So that somebody can be attracted. I say, well, something that is so easy through Christ Jesus. It may take a little while, but if you stay with Christ and you are deep in Christ and you are rooted in Christ, everything will come to plan as Christ. He can never leave you stranded. If you ever stay with him, he can never leave you stranded. He will never. I was telling Kufri of the progression of the life of these young people that I've mentioned in the church. The progression of their lives. And now God takes them from one thing to another. From one thing to another. Until their life is at the level of comeliness. I see them grow with my eyes like this. And everybody persecuting us in Galway. And telling us that we are caught. They tell people who were LGBT. These people were soplifters in Galway here. They were, they were under compulsive disorder of soplifting. Then from there, because they didn't get anybody to, 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 to woo them or to come around them, they, they formed an LGBT group, began to do lin, lingerie party or lin, lingerie. Lingerie or lingerie. And they, they, they grouped themselves together and began to hold a smear campaign against this church that they are a court, that they are a court. All of them are nowhere to be found. Their life is never normal. Till today. If you hear outside, then they say the church is a court. You see us here. You see that I'm talking live on telly or whatever. Police in God will watch us. They tell me they watch you. We watch you. You see that I, I'm very open-minded. There's nothing I don't talk about. What are you afraid of? At what age? The reason why your ideology cannot stand as Christian is because you are close-mouthed. If you are open-mouthed, your ideology will stand. They will fight you. When they see that you are convinced in the ideology, they will move away. That's why you need the Holy Ghost. I was telling Kufri, I said, I'm no more than this as we were in the car. I said, I'm no more than this. The only thing that turns me is my passion for God. He just turns me. He just like wine. He intoxicates me. I'm very ordinary. Until that wine begins to intoxicate me. Now I'm intoxicated as I'm talking. Now. And they began to say, the church is a cult. The church is a cult. Now they are looking for boyfriend. They can't find. Some of them even want to change from LGBT and have boyfriend. Some of the boyfriend talk to us. say, no, it still looks like man. I can't. Say, but she's begging me to have boyfriend. They don't know that we know. That the boyfriend come to complain. Uh, why are you disturbing yourself? Me man, now, only woman I like. I don't like man. What will I be doing with man? I call this guy, he will now, ha, ha, God forbid. <laughs> I've never deceived myself in my life. As a man, you can't touch me. For what? I'll punch you. As a woman, you can mistakenly touch me. The Lord forgives you. From young age, woman has been a very great person. <laughs> but man, for what? <coughs> Sophia Kwa. <laughs> I don't even know you exist as a man. I'm a feminist. Are you listening to what I'm saying? They wasted their time. They wasted their life. But I saw Reki engage. I saw Gordon engage. I, got, I saw Sinab over. Even this young man. I was telling somebody yesterday. I said, Sadiq is getting married. He said, oh, wow. He said, Sadiq to who? I said, Mary. Mary was her school daughter. The person I was talking to said, Mary that I was talking to just... Two years ago or three years ago that I said don't leave Pastor David's church. 
that just came. He said, I said, she's a registered medical scientist now. And she's getting married in November. I said, wow. He said, wow. I said, it's wow. Making progress. I see them. Watch them make progress like this. Let me tell you, the first 20 years, if it is gone, your young age is actually gone. The second 20 years that take you to 40 is your old age. From 40 to 60 is your retirement age. Don't deceive yourself. I'm just telling you. You see, they say 50 years. He said, take them out of service. How can God be like this? Is it good? <laughs> and it is in the Old Testament. In those Old Testament, people can still live to be 200 years, 100 and something. Now that people even die at 70, maybe he's telling them, take them out of service now by 30. There is a cap to when you are really useful. But there is a way to be useful forever. Psalm 92. I think from verse 13. I want you to just listen to me and go back to God. And go back to God. And go back to God. And go back to God and set your priority right. God is always looking for who to use and who to bless. God is always looking for who to distinguish. But he always likes that human being realize the position in which you are. You need to realize the position in which you are. If you are old, don't say I'm young. First of all, say I'm old. <laughs> now sit down to see, how did I get old? Like, Ofo was teaching last week. He said, Where did, how did time fly? And I did not know. Because Ofo also was a young person. He's 31 now, going to 32. That is moving to 40. All of you that are looking at me very soon, you'll not be dying your white hair. Or some of you will be going little by little up. up. After some time, you just scrape your hair. You say, I like to feel fresh. In my... But it is that hair cannot cope with. <laughs> and I was thinking that it's only men that go bird. I've seen women also. Their hair is now in the middle. It now remains at, it now remains at the back. But at a young age, you will not be like that. Except if there is a case of alopecia. Are you, are you hearing what I'm saying? There's a way even biology tells you. The biological clock, you begin to see wrinkles all over your face. Your face coming together like there is everything. You now need a lot of makeup to be able to be normal. But there was a time you didn't need makeup and boys were running after you. They call it the flower of your age. That flower, what kind of beast coming there to suck it? That is when God really wants to take a hold of you and use you for his glory. If he starts using you for his glory at that time, he will use you for his glory forever. You'll be fresh forever. Go from verse 12. Let's see from verse 12. Please, look at this and, and please do something about your life. Do something about your destiny. The righteous are flourish like, palm, like the palm tree and shall grow like a southern Lebanon. Let's stop from there first. It's the righteous. Hmm. I don't know who was watching with me. I was watching a woman from, Oni, you are the one. We were watching a woman from Jamaica that is 141 years old. He's a herbalist, not herbalist of evil spirit like Africa. Somebody who uses herbs, he said, I don't do no sugar, I don't do no chocolate, I don't do no milk. The way she was even talking. At 141, she's still very cognitive. You know, I've told you, what you eat determines who you become. If you are big, it's what you'll be eating. Don't just say it's gin. Stop some of the things that they eat, the people of your family. See whether the gin will not run. The gin will run. 
Jennifer would say. Did you not see her before? How she used to be. I used to do as she was an American idol. Ha, ha, ha. All of a sudden, ah, she was emaciating. I was telling people, I don't like her the way she is now. She's not looking beautiful. Recently, I look at her. She's just so, such a speck. You never knew that somebody like that can come down from the gene. Some of you that lie on gene. You can, you can re-engineer your gene. Yes, that's a re-engineering of gene. Because gene is also a function of what you are eating to feed it. That's why they say the best way to break, the best way to break generational causes is to see what are the habits that power the causes in your family. One pastor was saying that in his family, there are a number of things that power the habit. Of, he said people are poor. He said, number one, they are proud. Number two, they are liars. Number three, they are drunkard. And number four, they are immoral. He said, a demon appeared to him. And God said, immorality in your family, lie in your family, pride in your family, and drunkenness. Anybody that these things tempt and fall into them, we eventually become a entity. There is no generational cause. Sit down very well, young lady. There is no generational cause that, don't, that doesn't have powers and factors that power them. I'm saying, one day I was looking at husband, wife, and children. I don't know whether you are with me. You know? And they are together. In one place, I told my wife, I said, what is this? The husband is pregnant. The wife is pregnant. The two of them, you know? <laughs> and they were going inside and go and find out what they will buy. They will never buy lemon. They will never buy lime. They will never buy cucumber. They are going to buy bacon. Ham. Burger. They buy a lot of mayonnaise. Chicken. They, they will buy. Go and check what they buy. Then they buy chewing gum and snacks, chocolate. To just snack as they are going home. I've actually seen people like that. Their children, themselves. Everybody is pregnant and larger than life. He can be handled. There's nothing that cannot be handled. But anyway, uh, what is good, what is uh, one man's food is another man's poison. Some people are good, big. I'm good, slim. Sorry. Are you, are, you listening, are you listening to what I'm saying? Are you listening to what I'm saying? So, number one, where is it? Why, why are you closing this thing? Please put it back there. The righteous are flourished like palm tree. Number one is that you have to become a righteous person. You have, to be born, you have to be genuinely born again. Let me stay on this before I go on. A lot of people who say they are born again are not born again. Let me ask you a question. How is it that before you got born again, you never had a tattoo. You never became a rasta. You never had the earnings. You never had a girlfriend or a boyfriend. You never went to club. You never went clubbing. But after you say you got born again, you now got a tattoo. To reveal Christ so that Christ can be greater. You now got a earning so that Jesus can be more beautiful as a man. Which kind of born again is that? You just tell me. Which kind of being born again is that? The Bible says being born again, not of the corruptible seed, but of the incorruptible of the word of God that lives and abides forever. It's not everybody that says I'm born again that is born again based on the word of God. It is the word of God that has to get you born again. You have to be truthfully born again. That is what makes you to become the righteous. It doesn't mean that immediately, it doesn't mean that immediately everything you ever know to do will just change. But you yourself, I remember when Reki got born again, she said, Everything changed, everything is just changed, everything is just changed. I'm reborn. That's what she was saying. I'm reborn. She didn't even know what she was saying. I'm reborn, Pastor. I'm reborn. <laughs> Me, I knew what she was saying. I said, This thing is real. I said, God gave me five people's name to preach to them. And progressively from that time, she has grown better and better. He doesn't mean that everything around you will change, but you will know that it's a change of heart. 
2 Corinthians 5, 17. If any man be in Christ, a new creation, all things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. So many of you have been so wrongly charged that you don't know the meaning of being born again uh, uh, from, I mean, different from just going to church and say, I receive Jesus. There's a difference. Being born again is personal. You have met with God personally. I met with God as a Muslim. 29th of March, 1992. My whole community knew that Wakili changed. Because prior to that, I had girlfriends. And I was making noise around the community. I was, I was a thief. I was a thief. Before that time, I started going to church. But the church mainly was to find cool girls. As a cougar. <laughs> but after I got born again, I just discovered that my heart just changed. That's, you cannot flourish except you are righteous. That's why some of you, it's difficult for you to understand what they teach in the church. Because you don't have the nature that connects to that teaching. Somebody was... Somebody was disturbing somebody in this church not too long ago. I was telling them, oh, uh, I don't want anybody to make contact with me. I told the person, get it out of your phone. I said, because that is how I wasted my time, my precious time, my resources, my hours, my money on people that I thought were born again, but who, did, who were not born again. Eventually, their nature sold up. And they began to bite me very deep. Because as at the time you thought they were born again, everything that they born again, see, a born again Christian does not need to be policed. The conscience God has given to you that comes alive at new creation, that conscience is, on, is enough a policeman for you by yourself. Nobody is watching you. It is you watching yourself. If we go wrong, it's by yourself you'll be telling people. They did not know, but you're telling them I just told a lie. That's the reason why some of you are in a relationship or you are with some brothers or some sisters and you are coming to the fellowship together. There is no dead that brother ever said, I think I did wrong. My conscience is not at rest. I think I committed a sin. I, somebody is not saying that. Their heart is still the heart of stone. It has not changed. What happened a new creation is that your heart turns to the heart of flesh. It's an open wound. Only truth heals it. But the Bible talks about some people that have their heart seared with a hot iron. You are a 30% liar when, before you got born again. After getting born again, you are 100% now. No, you have not met Christ. There are so many people who thought they have met Christ and they have only met crisis in church. I, somebody came here one time, used to attend this church, and all of a sudden came back. Where I knew when the person got engaged to somebody and came back and said, uh, uh, Pastor David, I want to go do my wedding. They were already attending another church not very far from here. I want to do my wedding and I want you to be the one that will read the Bible. My wife was there. My wife's knees were jacking to each other as I was talking. My wife was severe. <laughs> All of you see me, I'm very simple. When it comes to the word of God, the kind of boldness that I have is more than one. I'm not going to go to hell because of you. Me, I've been watching them over Facebook. I've seen that they move together. They have started having sex. And you know what the Bible says? In Hebrews, let me put Hebrews chapter 13. You see verse 5 or verse 4. Marriage is honorable in all. Bear down the fire. Hormongers and adulterers will God judge. Please, please, please be quick before I come back here. Hebrews 13, 4. Marriage is honorable in all and the bed on the fire. Can you find another translation? But hormongers and adulterers will God judge. Please put another translation there because these people, they didn't understand the English that we were learning 79 years ago when I first came alive. Huh? The blood of Jesus. Anyway, when you will read it from other translations, it will say, marriage must be kept undefiled. Sexually immoral people go with judge. 
You cannot be sleeping with who you want to marry when you have not married the person. But I keep telling people, marriage is not a hard thing. Just get to know the person you want to marry. You can go the following day to the court and you are married. Instead of stealing the food at the back, you can actually go in front to go and eat the food free of charge, fully, in the presence of everybody and you can be holding each other's hand and you don't have any problem. So I discovered that these guys, they have already started doing things together. They now came to my office that I'm going to be part of the officiating officers, that the pastor of their church is the one that is going to join them. Woman, no. And they say, me, I'm going to read Bible. I say, read Bible over what? My wife was there. I say, read Bible over what? The wife, the wife to me said, what do you mean? What do you mean? You know, my uncle is a pastor in the United States of America. I say, God bless him. I say, I say, <laughs> I say, have you repented in your church for having sex? The husband said, the wife wanted to be defended. The wife, the husband said, you know, I don't actually see that as a sin, as such in Christ Jesus. The wife wanted to be saying, we didn't do anything. I was looking at them like this with that. Hey. I'm not judging, but I'm bringing you into the truth. So that you don't go to hell. You don't think God, God, God condones that. God does not say people cannot have sex. He said get married. You can meet today. Get married tomorrow. Then go and be beating each other for the rest of your life. <laughs> Since you want to be in a hurry. Because anything you do not patiently wait for in this life. You will still lose it. The Bible says an inheritance can be hastily gotten, but the hand thereof shall not be blessed. That is a waiting process for every single thing. If you get pregnant today, you are not going to give birth to that baby until nine months, except you want to give birth to uh, uh, premature. And it's dicey whether the baby will be alive or not. It's comesy come sir. It's 50-50. The baby may not survive it. But the possibility of a baby surviving when he gets to the rhyme time, prime, I mean, ripe time before the baby comes out, the possibility is high. Are, are, you, are you listening to what I'm saying? And I say, he said, I'm just so disappointed in you, Pastor David. I say, it's better you are disappointed in me than my conscience is bleeding before God. In their church, they are not told. And if you're not told, how do you appropriate the information you do not know? The information that is given to you, your close proximity to an information, means that you are almost there. But if nobody is talking to you about the information, everybody is sleeping with each other. You, before you got born again, you were smoking. After you got born again, it still continues. It doesn't mean that smoking takes you to hell. But smoking does not represent Jesus Christ well. Just like get into town now and wear only pants does not take you to hell. But it shows that you are actually mad. <laughs> because even, even mad people will say, wow. <laughs> wow. Wow. Some people from far where you cannot see them, they're taking pictures Say, one madman came to the city today <laughs> and everybody needs to see this madman. There's a possibility I may be hurting you right now, but you need to hear the truth. Only the righteous. Don't start quoting it. Don't start quoting it. Get genuinely born again. It's not everybody that is genuinely born again. Get genuinely born again. And when you now get genuinely born again, the Bible says you will flourish like palm tree. You will grow like cedar of Lebanon. As you, how, what makes you grow? I said it the other day. As a little child. He didn't say you are a little child. He said as a little child. That means convert yourself to a little child. He said desire the sincere milk of the world. Like you are seated in this place now. Somebody get born again. Does not like to go to Bible study. Does not like to go to prayer meeting. Only want to dance and say, hey, what's the name? Uh, uh, well, uh, Travis Green. Uh, when my back was against the wall, And you are playing it from Monday to night. He does you no good. If you're not prayerful. He does know you no good. If you don't have the background of the word of God. Worship is of no quality. The quality of your worship is based 
on both your spiritual life and the word life. The foundation of the word of God that you have on the inside of you. Otherwise, you'll be doing empty worship that doesn't get nowhere. You'll be worshiping, you, you'll be emotional, you will think it's the, it's the spirit. There's a difference between being emotional and you are crying. You can cry me a river and there's no recognition for it in the heavenly quarters. Have you not seen very dangerously addict? And they say, I mean it. I'm not going to do this again. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. No, I'm not going to put my family to shame. They follow money. They are picking them from every street. There's a difference between emotion and real decision. So, so many people are just emotional, remorseful. They catch a thief. They no, because of shame. If they didn't catch him, they release him from the jail. Not less than 30 days he has committed another one. There was no quality decision to change. You will grow, and to grow is a function of what you are engaged with, what you are hitting. I'll, I'll show you that in a moment, which is Psalm 105, for, uh, Psalm 103, verse 3. Now go on, go on. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the court. Can you see? Go on to another one. They shall still bring forth fruit in old age. They shall be fat and flourishing. Go on. To show that the Lord is upright. He is my rock. There is no unrighteousness in him. Can you see how God can elongate somebody's life? How God can elongate somebody's youth? A man is a young man based on what he's eating or what, and he's an old man based on what he's eating. You can know a footballer different from somebody who is a normal human being. Helen, the money. You meet with somebody, the stomach is out like this. You know he cannot be a footballer. Everybody must eat a bowl of pounded yam. <laughs> He's a footballer at his own backyard. <laughs> you see the stomach of a footballer. They don't, they don't need to tell you that they are ripped. They must be ripped. There must be six pack. They are taking them to the gym. Somebody is watching them as they are stretching and everything. But somebody just sit down somewhere, eating and begging. You, you know he's not a footballer. He's as retired. He cannot be, he cannot be first level. Maybe they have benched him. Maybe they have sent him to the second team. A feeder team. We, we are, they will never remember him. Let, let Ronaldo, let Finicius Jr. Let them remove, let him back to remove his set. See a ripped man. He is not looking for how to be ripped. But the demand of the game requests that he must be ripped because he must be going to gym. They will dive in the water. That's nothing they don't do. Those people, that's nothing they don't do. You think it's only football they practice. Psh. They will never succeed if it's only football they are playing. They take them to where they will swim. Some of them, they, tie, they teach them taekwondo like the Cameroonian team. <laughs> they, they teach them to come, so they are not thick like this. <laughs> you on the floor. They, they use every part of it. You, 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 you give them sliding tackle. They are still standing. Because, you know, they have done <laughs> every single thing. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord. It's very important for me to establish this fact. See, if you really want God to extend your youth, or to make you regain your youth. That is nothing beat being rooted in God. Look at Psalm chapter 1. Let me show you. Psalm chapter 1. Psalm chapter 1. Please know who the person. Blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. Blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. But this is a Herculean task. It's very hard not to do. It's like say, blessed is the man that does not know, blessed is the girl that does not know how to dress like Beyonce. Don't you see that it's very hard for you guys? By the time you go and buy your bone straight air, you're already thinking of Beyonce. You are not thinking Jesus. Are you thinking Jesus? Many people want to do, when they want to do their wedding, they are not thinking Jesus. They are thinking of the last thing they saw in the Instagram, how the hair was. 
It's very hard. All these things that, that the Psalm of David started with is very hard. He said, Bless is the man. He said, This man is going to be blessed. The word bless me and power to prosper in all the things of God. He's the man that does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of this convo. Now see. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. This guy is eating the word. And the word of God is not just to him, the word of God. The word of God is law to him. He sees in the word of God. Thou shalt not keep malice. To him is a law. To some other people, you say, God knows I don't have power to keep that. Only the Holy Spirit can help me keep that. You are not ready. But somebody says, God has said this thing. I will align myself to make sure that it is kept. It is a first in my life. He said, he delights in law, in the law. Not to, he's looking for the law of God in the word of God. He's looking for law. Because eventually in this life, only laws work. They talk about the law of gravity. They talk about the law of lift. If you don't know how to obey those laws, they don't work for you. His delight is in the law of God. And in it does he meditate day and night. This is what he's eating. This is what now helps him. Look at the next verse. He is like a tree planted, rooted. By the rivers of water that bring forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither. But whatever he does shall prosper. Who is the man that will not stand in the, in, in, walk in the counsel of the ungodly? Stand in the way of sin and not sit in the seat of discomfort. Everybody will do it very gently, very nicely, very coolly. Without letting another person know. It takes being rooted, being planted in the house of God, being rooted in the word of God to be able to say no to many of these things. And if you don't say no many of these things, they are the ones that corrupt your youth. They are the ones that corrupt your energy. They are the ones that corrupt the visions and the revelations of God for your life. That's when you find a little girl, 21 year old, has aborted 10 times. By the time you now calculate the biological clock on this woman, this young lady's body, it's like a 45 year old woman that has given birth 10 times. Some of them have not aborted, but the level of pills that have settled inside their bodies. The level of pills that you, you see young, young men also. The tons of sperm that have come out of their body. How much of it? How much they have exercised themselves into this thing? You will, when they put them on the biological scale, they discover that this man is 70 years old. Because they say it takes 21 days to recuperate. Abi, is that not biology? That when you release once, it takes 21 days. So everybody is managing his release. But you, you are, you, the way you are rushing your home, <laughs> you are 20 years old. One man was sick at a time because he was so depressed. He was sick. And they say his heart was affected. And they tested his heart. This guy was 35 years old. They told him, they say, you have five more years to live because your, his heart was like a 75 year old man. Some of you don't know there are certain things that happen to our body that turns you whole biologically in the spirit realm. That's why some of you could have a dream. You just see yourself using stick. You, say, you wake up and say, God forbid. <laughs> they are just showing you your true picture. <laughs> they are just showing you your true picture in the spirit realm. Are you listening to what I'm saying? But you are planted by the rivers of, you are planted in the word of, your delight is in the word of God and as a result of that you are planted. The Bible says you will flourish in old age because you have made many choices and many decisions based on the word of God that have made you to escape many things that make, that, that the devil uses to make people hold. You now retain your youth even at old age you still bear fruit. He says, I'll be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. He is planted. That bring forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither. And whatever he does, he says, and I've seen this man. I've seen people who pastored me many years ago. They were 50 years old that time. They were very young. They are 82, 83 right now. They are still bustling with strength. White air. But their energy is incomparable even to a guy of 30 years old. 
that is just sleeping and sleeping. I've met some girls, little, little girls, the rate of sleep. I'm asking, what work did she do during the day? Some of you can sleep for 12 hours. Pastor Deboye turned 80. He said, now I sleep four hours a day. He said, before I couldn't. I only slept about three hours. Old men will dream dreams because they will have a lot of sleep. So many of the things that all of you are saying, say, I see Pastor David, it's like he was kissing somebody because you are sleeping too much. Don't know how sweet you are. He's looking for how to kiss you. He said, I saw in a dream that our church, hmm, I saw pigs. I saw the face of somebody. I didn't want to talk to you about the name. See, it's a pig. And you want us to announce the dream. The dream that you were having when you were slumbering. When you, you slept 12 hours. Why would the devil not plant evil spirit? He said, why men slept? <laughs> One man of God told us how to sleep. When you want to sleep, put by audio Bible. Let it continue to read. Or prayers. Where somebody is speaking in tongues. As you sleep, it mingles with your sleep. There is no sleep. Because in your sleep, or you are playing, it transports you to another realm. Even in your sleep, you are awake and you are very conscious in the spirit. But some of you sleep the way you even open mouth. Somebody knows that something is about going down. And by the time you wake up, that is why it's thick. Because tons of water. Some, somebody once said, if you sleep eight hours a day, by the time you're 30 years old, you have slept 10 years of your life. 10 years of sleep. That's apart from the time that you now use in front of the mirror to paint your face. Apart from the time you went to the toilet. Apart from the time you were on Instagram. So by the time they now calculated everything, you have lived... 30 years, but 20 years out of it have been very useless. You're not being saying, God, I'm 30 years old. Do you know the meaning of 30 years? <laughs> All the angels are laughing. Say, no, we don't know. You know more than us. Then I say, sorry, your age is actually 10 years now. You are supposed to be using diapers because you're 10 years old. He said, no, but I'm not 10 years. God, don't talk like that. Say, but 20 years, you have slept, ate, you ate, you drank, you Instagram, you TikTok. I'm 20. They even say, as a matter of fact, it's even 22 years. You are eight. <laughs> it's eight that you have lived like a normal human being. Psalm 103, verse 5. I'll let close with that. I see young people, they are no longer, their heart is no longer simple. Their heart is congeal. Their heart is tough. There is, there is no body that is that is big enough to lead them. They are too big to be led. I see young people, their heart is not simple. Their heart is not soft. Their heart is not humble. Their heart is not meek. They have developed ideas on their own of how to live life. Nobody can tweak them. And it actually shows that you have obtained another stream of wisdom from Satan. How? Based on what you are eating. Where do you get? You can never get in the Bible. How to not pierce your ear three times as a man and put three earrings. You can never get it in the Bible. Who will be your mentor? Only with looking at Kenya West and Jesid and Lily Wayne or Snoop Doggy. I don't know whether that one is singing or is saying something. That's Lily Wayne. How can you be born from a Christian home and the day you now want to start singing, your rap is like Lil Wayne. If you are on the street, we know. Because if you are on the street, by the time you get into Christ, all that you want to do is rap that you have been rapping. You think we are not watching you. Yes, I, uh, when life really hits you, well, <laughs> your rap will turn to worship. Oh, my God. <laughs> when I hear uh, someone with uh, 
She don't guys let worship go. But when you first go up and again, say, Hadi Sani, ha, to, he don't follow he, ha, he come and say, Hey, Lema, on the end, he, 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 Hadi Sani, Feli, Hadi Sata. It's not that you saw in the Bible, but Lin Wayne, the thing is still, the, the drink of Lin Wayne, the, 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 that is see inside, you are, you are, is, is turning you. And say, I want to rap, you know, God loves everybody's gift. We know you are watching Snoopy Dog. You said the Holy Ghost just gave me. <laughs> After some time, you say, I want to rap for Jesus. When, when the Holy Ghost really took a hold of you, I want to rap for Jesus. You, you, only yourself, you'll be, you'll be singing, Blessed assurance. <laughs> Jesus is my say, rap, rap, ma. He said, please. <laughs> because you have grown in the spirit. When you now even want to rap, let now say you want to rap, the lyric will be so filled with the anointing and the grace of God. That people are almost sedentary. tears. They are under intense presence of God. But this one, that the only thing everybody is doing is just what you have say, Holy ka, Hirimuka, Impro, Hinka. And by the time you are done, about three guests like you in the church. That's how they have been liking Kanye West. The one he married recently, Kasera, was is all over. It's all over. Who satisfied thy mouth with good things and thy youth is renewed like the eagles? If your youth will be renewed, what you are eating? He starts from the renewal of art. Because youth is based on art. Somebody dies at 35. People are hugging, he's young. But he has smoked so much, the heart and the lung are 90 years old. Some people are baby. One, I was doing some school in uh, Dublin. Master's program between 2008 and 2009. And there was a particular guy I used to talk to there. There was a guy that used to come to our class. This guy was boiling herself. It's the way she was smoking. I told the other guy, I said, why does this guy like to boil herself? He's, he's a chain smoker. <laughs> oh, David. <laughs> I said, I said, the intestine will be boiling. Have they shown you the, the lung of a smoker before and the lung of a normal human being? It's not to spite anybody. In Christ Jesus, that habit can be broken. Somebody say amen. amen. And the person, he's dying at 35. And they say, he's so young. He's so young. He said, gone too early. Gone too soon. But when death came to claim the person, that, that say, I don't have any guilt to, because the person is 90 years old. He said, go and test the heart. What are you eating? Who satisfied thy mouth with good things? And your youth is renewed like the eagles. The word of God is food. Worship is food. Coming to the church is food. All right? You're talking with other believers is food. He makes you grow. And as a result of that growth, it decides for you. That spiritual growth decides for you the complaint you will keep. There was a particular pastor's son that used to be in this church. As a matter of fact, two of them that they gave to me. One of them, he will be on the guitar. The only thing he ever played, ta -na 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 -na, ta -na -na -na, and he will be looking down on everybody. Yes, we do not really know how to play many things here. But I've never prided myself to say that the people in the powerhouse are the best. But they are consistent and they have the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And that is what I need. You think I'm not a musician. You think I don't have me here for music. I've been singing from 77. I have here for music. I know when music is good or not. But in Christ Jesus, it's not about good music. It's about blessed music. And blessed music can only come from a person who is growing in the Lord and consistent. Somebody will come on Sunday and they just want to sing on Sunday. What are you going to be singing for us? He will be like, -na 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 -na, and he'll be looking at everybody. -na 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 -na. By the time I will meet, her, meet him in JMIT, he was in the midst of uh, hooligans. That's another one. If you roll his hand on the keyboard, Bible study. No, before you say Jack, he's already attached to almost a witch. 
who is hallucinating every day, every day coming to me, pastor, I don't know, some spirits are just attacking me. That is when this pastor's son is attached to. The word of God will dictate your group. If you are really eating the word of God, I will see it by the friend you keep. When you get born again, somebody say, I can lose my friends before I, because I found God. You never found God. When you really found God, you will only keep friends that found God because I remember when I got born again, I went back to some of my friends. The level of cursing and cursing. The cursing, you call F word cursing. Is that curse? It's not anything. If you say F word in Nigeria, it's not anything. For what? Cursing, we say in Nigeria, I say, he shall not be well with you. Your head shall never do good. Those are the real causes. Real causes. I went to one of them, we were just talking. Before you say that, he said, God of thunders will kill you. I said, <laughs> say, hey, say, Malara, Malara was the name. I said, you can't say that to me. He said, when did you become like that? Say, say your own back. I said, no. He said, no. So I knew I could not be there. And every time she always wanted to talk about the last boy that picked her, how they went to the house, they had fun. How he did not really open her body. How he did not. I said, wow. But those are the things we used to talk together. But now I become born again. I just want to talk about the things of God. Things that will not chase the angels of God away. And this guy is not ready for that. How can we be together? Light and darkness don't cooperate. The Bible talks about it. Second Corinthians chapter 6. I think I will end with that. But let me first of all, satisfy your mouth with good things. What you eat determines what you say. What you say determines your group. Ask them, apart from this one, the rest of them, like Senab, used to see me in LTU. We see me coming here, we run away. She was only able to stay in my presence because they knew that the reason why I came to GMIT, I used to, I used to pray with them. How are you, girl? I was, there, I was behaving like as if I'm 20 uh, than I'm, I am. Hey, how are you, girl? They just knew. Yeah. <laughs> this, this man is looking for who to convert. <laughs> They just see me this way. They go to the is that man there? <laughs> they, just, they just they just run. <laughs> they just even though I can tell you, let go and hit peace. How are you? What are you doing? Come on, knock to knock. They know that not good to this, not good to knock, not lie. That the knock to knock is how I'll bring them to the very <laughs> so they run away. But by the time they receive Jesus Christ as their Lord as a savior, they couldn't have enough of my presence. They were so glue. So what you are eating, what is inside your heart will determine your group. It will determine your group. It would give me Second Corinthians chapter 6. The last few verses. Be not equally yoked. It's in the word of God. Don't leave what is in the word of God and go and be caught in the philosophy of man. It has never helped anybody. The devil is not afraid of the philosophy of man. When did Satan came to Jesus in chapter 4 of the book of Matthew, did he say, in philosophy, he said, you must be, you must obey, you must respect everybody's emotion, devil. <laughs> the devil is, you quote me philosophy. He said, Today I eat you for lunch. He was quoting the word of God. It is written. It is written. If you don't have it, it is written. One of my boys encountered a devil in a dream and was telling the devil, you are so stupid. I said, you yourself, don't be so stupid. You better go. When we are praying, you better pray. When we are studying the word of God, you better study the word of God. This is the same guy that a bird entered our house and took Bible and said, I will kill you in Jesus' name. And he single-handedly killed a bird at age six by himself. He was quoting the word of God, said, I kill you in the name of Jesus. I kill you in the name of Jesus. Now he now met with a giant that turned to Satan in the dream and said, You're so stupid. I said, What's the meaning of that? 
It means that the level of the word of God inside you is low. The devil does not respect. You know, sometimes some of you will meet demons in the dream and say, Leave me. You cannot don't, don't stay in my life. I don't want you to stay in my life. Leave me. Why? Why? And you are now running and running. Run, 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 run. Until some of you want to die. The devil didn't go. Except that you woke up. Even as you woke up, it means that he caught you. But somebody stands because he has eaten the word. Of, what you have eaten physically goes into your spiritual fire. When you meet with demons in the spirit realm, ah! I told you I had the revelation. I was in fasting. I had the revelation. I met with a madman. A lot of rings in his hand. I confronted him in the name of Jesus. Following day, somebody exactly like that came to me. It was very easy for me to handle the person. Then following week, I was in another three days fasting and prayer. I met with a lady. I mean, I met with a dog. We were sitting down and there was a lady's bag, expensive bag. And this dog was like a pit bull or Rottweiler, was tearing the bag apart and nobody could do anything about it. And he did not even stop at that. I was using very fair eyes to look at the dog because I'm not afraid of dogs, but I keep myself away from <laughs> what can bite me. And the dog took the, he was like we were in a crescent, took the bag from around there and went this way and was going with the bag. I double crossed the bag, the dog here. And I said, in the name of Jesus, put it down. The dog became a woman and took the bag back here and left it. You cannot do that in the spirit realm if you have not eaten well of the word of God during the day. You just be crying, Satan, you're Satan, don't touch my air. No, no, I don't wonder, I don't like that. Oh my gosh, you just tire me out. Oh. Because that's what you've been wearing, watching in Barbie. <laughs> and ballerina, that's, those are the things you've been watching. You are not reading, you are not reading the word of God. Whereby you are, you are able to say, get out, get it behind me, Satan. Look at it. Be not or equal, be not or equally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship at righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion at light with darkness? Go on. And what concord at Christ with Belial? Or what part at he that believes with an infidel? That's the word of God. And what agreement at the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them. I will walk in them. I will be their God. And they shall be my people. Go on. We have for come out from among them and be ye separate, says the Lord. And touch not on things, and I will receive you. It's in the New Testament. All of you, one save, save forever. Grace. So Peter say, grace is in the New Testament. This is New Testament. Is this Old Testament? Or you are writing a personal testament? Because some of you are writing personal testament. That you are inserting in the word of God. God understand my feelings. He doesn't. He doesn't. He understands what is in your heart, not your feelings. Both God and the devil understand whether it is them that is in your heart. They know. If you have the word of God, he said, your word have I kept in my heart that I may not sin against you. How shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed unto the word of God? The word of God, from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. You must align yourself to the things of God. You must align yourself to the word of God. Otherwise, when the devil comes with the counsel of the ungodly, you will bow. When they come with the seat of discomfort that you should sit down on the throne, you will sit down. When they come with the ways of sinners, you will go that way. Except your delight is in the word of God. And in it you meditate day and night. And the devil is so terrible. He bombards us with different kinds of things everywhere. Sometimes you just open your phone. You just want to read Bible genuinely. And I'm sure I'm not the only one that this happens to. All of a sudden, all the things that you have been watching in TikTok, they just pop out. Pian. It just pop up. Hey, this one, the marriage here, Nigerian news. Oh, uh, Fuji music. Oh, all of them just pop up. Before you say Jack, if you don't quickly take yourself out, you have spent one hour where you are laughing. Okay, 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 okay. And unfortunately, having laughed long enough does not handle any devil. If you are sick and you laughed, the sickness is still there if you didn't take medication. If you fail exam and they say just laugh, just laugh, just laugh. When the new academic year starts, you are going to repeat the class. Even if you laugh from now till forever. Laughter is going to change their record 
at the at the register, examination register. Except you prepare yourself for a repeat exam in August. Top the laughter. And prepare yourself very well and just say, Father, Father, help me. As you are, you are reading, you say, la, ka, ka, ka. You are praying, you are reading, you are reading, you are praying, and then you pass. Then you cannot laugh. You will have many. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Your delight must be in the Lord of the law of the law. That is how you will not be quoting philosophy when you need to stand on the word of God. What people feed you with is very important. I do not, one of the things I don't do in this church anymore, once you begin to align with certain people, I met with a guy who used to come to this church, and I met with him, and he said, I'm going to a particular church. I said, oh, God be with you. I know what you are going to turn to. Somebody that was not going to that church now told him, he said, go back to the powerhouse. You're going to grow there. In other words, if you keep coming with me where I am now, I'm not looking for growth anymore. He just wants to enjoy his own body. And somebody was taking his computer one day where a guy was asking him, when can we stop having sex? A guy was asking him. And if you meet him, he said, I'm growing where I am. A guy was asking, when can we stop having sex? A guy, the guy is tired now. I said, before, it was sweet. Now the guy is tired because he knows that our own life is just, he said, hey. <laughs> and he's asking, speaking in tongues, one safe, safe forever. When can we stop having sex because I'm tired? Are you listening to what I'm saying? Have you ever seen couple, boy and girl that are married to each other, say, when can we stop having sex? Why are you married? That's the, that's in the territory. Are, are you listening to what I'm saying? What, which group are you, are you is speaking to you? The Bible says, as he's speaking to me, his spirit entered into me. So many of you will hear this word of God that you are hearing, and then you go and tell somebody, they told us in that church, it's not good to have boyfriends. Say, is it church of Pastor David? I see Pastor David can have a church. He said, I don't just like that man. I don't like the way he talks. Does he talk the truth? The one that you like that is talking. What does he talk? He pampers you in your sin. You were not even as sinful as this before you got to that church. Now in that church, because of the way they cover up sins, you are more sinful. But you are one leg in Christ, one leg somewhere before you came to pastor. As soon as you came, they just make you to be afraid of everything. And then you discover your, your, your life, your spiritual life is growing in Christ. And then you go and talk to them and say, no, I don't like, I think you need to move away. There is a court. A court tells people to stop sinning. Have you ever seen a court that tells people to stop sinning? This court. Did the pastor call you and say, I want to sleep with you? Or did they ask you, come and give me money? When you see court, can you talk? Do you have mouth to talk? When you see the seed, can you say, I don't like the way you, you curse Jesus? Have you ever seen anybody saying that? They just say, oh, Jesse, oh my God. Oh. Whereas he cursed your Jesus in his music. And you can't look at his eyes and say it. Have you ever said it? If you see real courtist, come to Africa, it's not all this. People that are saying, I watch your palm You're on the street that are collecting money. Come to Africa and see people who turn to snake. And say it in their presence, you are a cut. <laughs> when you are already inside the belly. When, when, when you are shouting inside the belly, hey! <laughs> I saw a witch in Africa. You see this, this uh, line. Huh? This small line. This little line. Was like from there to there. And I was watching him with my own eyes, walking on that little tiny line from beginning to the end. I need you, that's your mouth that you are saying to somebody. I need you to come and meet him, you are a cult. By the time your breast grows from here to the ground and there is no bright bra to cover it, it's by yourself, you are not cut. <laughs> you have put the thing back there. <laughs> I actually want to go. Because in my hometown, some policemen, when, so one policeman went to go and slap a courtist. He went back home. He could not remove his uniform. <laughs> the uniform was stuck to his body. So the whole police commission had to come and beg that you, you are a good person in the community. <laughs> that nobody should talk. Any, as a matter of fact, you are the one who secures this community. You are a good person. Say, say one name, touch him. The blood, the cloth. I have watched. 
in Kenya, somebody went to go and steal. When somebody went to go and steal, and they sent bees all over his body. Bees are all over his body. And as I said, I'm the one who stole it. The bees will be more than 3 million bees. I've seen it more than two times. The last thing that I saw last week is, is different this week. Two people were having something and they are stuck. They now use cloth to write. How old them? People are trying to pull this guy because they have come out. People are trying to pull this guy out. The pain is too excruciating. The guy is, ah! Because the husband has put something on his wife before you went to go on. Touch the esophagus. Esophagus, he said. <laughs> and uh, me as a pastor, I'm watching and I say, eh? <laughs> go to the people who did that and say, you are a cut. Why don't you, why don't you travel to Africa and go and call cut, cut? And come back to come and tell us nonsense. Somebody is sweating like this. Somebody is pastoring for 32 years. He doesn't have a good house. He doesn't have a good court. They say he's a court leader. Court leader over what? What money does he have? What life is he living? What kind of a church do you call? Look at our church. No excessive decoration, no nothing. Everything we do is online. How I see a court? Because they know that you are not a thinker. That's the reason why they oppress you with their word. They say they speak in tongues there. So speaking in tongues is not in the Bible. They know you don't read the Bible. So now I like a place where they worship God. They're not speaking gibberish. Speaking in tongues is gibberish. Demons have not taught you before. You will look for one. <laughs> you will look for one. You will look for spiritual power when demons have when correct demons have taught you. May the Lord bless the reading and hearing of his word. Let's stand up. Give God praise.